Hi, and welcome to the next episode of ID Cyber Sessions. I'm Alice, and this is Steve, and we're both Cyber Essential Successors at ID Cyber Solutions. Today, we are speaking with Faisal Shabir, who's the Country Manager for EC Council. Um, so, Faisal, can you tell me a bit about yourself and how you came to be part of EC Council? Thank you for having me. Um, I've, uh, again, my industry goes back, uh, my experience goes back around 22 years. Uh, specifically in the information security background. Uh, so accidentally, I got onto the cybersecurity background. Um, I come from a finance and a logistics industry, uh, thinking that logistics is going to be the industry I'm going to get into, and I was <laughs> all that excited. And I, in fact, did my master's in in, uh, in operations management as well. And then, you know, all of a sudden, it just happened, uh, you know, where I was working for a, a distribution house, specifically dealing in cybersecurity solutions. That is when the interest uh, sort of, you know, created on there. And then um, I got an opportunity working for the distributor, uh, looking after their Kaspersky business, which then uh, took me on to uh, the vendor themselves, Kaspersky, where I was looking after their channel business for Middle East and, uh, and the Africa region. And then uh, moving on further, uh, working for McAfee, where again, I was looking after their consumer business specifically and the telecommunication industry. So obviously in the Middle East, it's quite a vast industry in terms of the telecommunication sector. Yeah. And, you know, specifically, they were kind of looking at uh, solutions from a consumer perspective where there's a lot of internet usage, you know, people have their own devices and, uh, you know, they, they, they use a lot of internet, right? So obviously they need to have security uh, in it. And again, when we're talking about 10 years back, 10 to 12 years back, they really did not understand what security yeah. was. And it was yeah. not really important for them until and unless they are a victim of an attack. Yeah. Yeah. That is when they actually take action on, right? Yep. So uh, so then again, uh, obviously the, the business there, what we used to do is that we used to kind of integrate security into uh, you know every internet user uh, in the Middle East region. So that's exactly what I was looking at. So uh, obviously working for the last 20 years uh, in, the, in the field and specifically in the Middle East market, I then wanted to explore outside the Middle East. And that's how I landed in London. This was around 2020. Uh, yeah. And and obviously, I, I happened to um, get an opportunity working with EC Council. Uh, so I've jo I joined EC Council in 2020, uh, looking after 22 markets of, uh, of theirs which includes, uh, apart from UK, uh, it also includes the Balkans, uh, the Baltics, uh, and as well as other regions like Israel, Turkey, Greece, and I don't know why, but all the way up to Mongolia. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. I do have a partner working in Mongolia. Now, primarily my responsibility working with ESA Council is uh, looking after our training centers. So uh, our business involves a lot working closely with training partners because, uh, you know, though we have, we sell uh, you know, directly to um, uh, aspiring cybersecurity professionals as well. But we believe that working with partners is what is really important and necessary to have the broader reach, mm -hmm. right? And that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, personally for me, because I have been in the channel business for the last 20 years, I'm quite passionate of working with partners across the region. The reason how the company just started is uh, right after the 9-11 attack. So right after the 9-11 attack, you know, when there was a lot of terrorist activities happening, uh, you know, there was all, there was obviously an angle looked forward towards what about cyber attacks, right? You know, and, and how is it that needs to be treated? You know, how the hackers uh, are really thinking, you know, what exactly is there in their mind? And, you know, how do, how do you really work towards reading their mind and understanding what exactly, you know, their activities are so that, you know, you protect from that angle. And that's how EC Council actually uh, started off, you know, and uh, there was a requirement by the Department of Defense in the United States where they specifically wanted a course where uh, they could teach their cyber professionals uh, in terms of how to ethically hack. Uh, and that's how the CEH, that is our most popular uh, certificate, which is a certified ethical hacker, was born. Uh, apart from that, um, uh, you know, we have our own uh, phishing simulation and security platform as well, where we specifically look at the compliance needs of organizations uh, across uh, across the region. And uh, recently, I would say around two to three years back is where we um, um, developed our own uh, cyber range platform. And one of the reasons why we 
we developed our own cyber range platform is that we thought that since the last 20 years of training people in the field of cybersecurity, you know, we obviously wanted to look at a way of how we can move to the next level mm -hmm. because just theoretical learning is, uh, is not important. You obviously you need to have a lot of, uh, labs in it and, uh, you know, you need to have a lot of hands-on experience in it. And that's where CyberQ came into existence. So you just briefly uh, mentioned obviously the learning track. Um, so where do we start? Um, with that learning track, um, I know there's some basic qualifications, but I know you've got some free courses as well. Sure, sure, sure. So uh, when you talk about free, uh, you know, uh, what we are trying to focus on are those students um, or those professionals who are very new in the field. Right now, let's say, for example, if they're university students, they've just come out of a university or they're high school students, for example, right now, they once they have finished their studies off, they've completed them, you know, they are not in a position to really afford um, certifications, which are a little bit more pricey, right? And that's one of the reasons why we've designed courses where we can specifically uh, introduce the world of cybersecurity for these professionals. And the best part, obviously, what we've done is that we've completely made that free. So we have, so when you start as part of the learning track, it starts first with the essential series where the essentials series is is uh, divided into three different uh, let's say uh, knowledge bases mm -hmm. so you have uh, the ethical hacking essentials you have the network defense essentials and you have the digital forensic essentials right now by the word of each of them you can understand that there are three different areas of study or three different areas of knowledge now for example mm -hmm. if it's a student who is into network defense not necessary that he's going to become an ethical hacker tomorrow, right? And that's one of the reasons why we've introduced these three uh, courses. And again, when you talk about essential series, they are all video led courses. So you have a uh, course content, which is around 11 to 15 hours, uh, approximately self paced learning where students can take their own time to uh, learn through all the materials. They are all fundamentals for anyone who wants to get into in the industry. And yes, and let's say that if they want to upgrade to attempting an exam, you know, they want to get certified, uh, you know, they want to, let's say, get a little bit of hands on knowledge as well. That is when they pay a small fee. But otherwise, the courseware, um, you know, the entire video enabled courses, they are all completely free. And obviously, one of the courses that you offer is the CCT or the Certified Cybersecurity Technician, which I just took myself um, in February. Could you tell us a bit more about that one? Now, once we move on from the essential series, that is when our first entry level course starts, which is the CCT, uh, the Certified Cybersecurity Technician. Uh, and again, the Certified Cybersecurity Technician, again, is an entry level course specifically designed for those professionals who learn a bit about ethical hacking, who learn a bit about network defense, digital forensics and security operations, or you would call it more from a incident handling perspective. Now, that's and entry into the field, right? So that's where, uh, you know, entry level professionals, uh, they get onto the industry, uh, trying to sort of look at jobs where they become security assessors, you know, where they help in assessments, for example, right? So that's our entry towards uh, the field of cybersecurity courses. And then once, uh, once that's done, once they are certified with CCT, that's when they decide the, the, the four different, um, I would say, domains in cybersecurity they get into. The first one obviously starts first with CH, which is the most popular course, as I mentioned. And then uh, you have the CND, which is a certified network defense. So CH is a red team course. We call it more of an offensive kind of a course, whereas CND is more of a defensive course. We call it a blue team uh, course uh, out here. Now, when you, when, when, when you talk about four domains, the four domains I'm talking about, the first one, which is the offensive side, which is in vulnerability assessment. The second one, which is blue, which is network defense. Then you have purple, which is the incident handling. And then the last one, green, which is application security. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why it has been, um, let's say, diversified is because uh, a lot of people, when they, uh, when, when they enter into the industry and when they see cybersecurity as a career, right? Uh, a lot of them have this confusion that, okay, what is it that I'm going to get into, right? Because it's such a vast field. When they say cybersecurity, they just think about, you know, uh, hacking and they think about, you know, how to protect from hacking, how to protect from attacks. Uh, but then the field is so vast. 
so that every professional when they get onto this industry that is when they decide that okay what is it that exactly i want to get into now there are a lot of professionals who think that okay uh, you know maybe they have this in their blood that okay i like to protect people from crime or i like to protect people from attacks right so then they move on to uh, for example the network defense side of it where uh, they learn a lot about um, incident handling they learn a lot about soc analyst as well because a lot of these multinational multiple organizations big enterprises they have their own security operation center yeah. right which is 24/7 running mm -hmm. now they need people to run that center right and that's where the soc analyst part of it uh, comes as mm -hmm. a, as a course so you have professionals you know who think that okay defending is what i like right so that's the area where i want to get into right so if, when you talk about that you talk about threat intelligence you talk about incident handling you talk about network defense you talk about soc analyst right even to a certain perspective uh, you know critical infrastructure organizations right today we've been hearing a lot of attacks happening yeah. specifically in critical infrastructure and now let's say uh, what's happening with the russia ukraine war right a lot of ukrainian critical infrastructure organizations energy companies they have been a victim of a cyber attack right there are even now as we speak a lot of uh, you know across the city when you talk about the, the main city kiev they're out of electricity yeah. uh, there are certain hours where they get uh, a bit of electricity otherwise they are out right mm -hmm. that's because it has been severely devastated and again there there has been a lot of emphasis towards that right recently there has been an attack with uh, the company dol d o l e yeah. which is a mm -hmm. a, a very big food uh, you know food distribution yeah. house mm -hmm. and probably you must have read that in the news again that is into critical infrastructure because they have to you know have the distribution running for um, food uh, you know across uh, across the world right and they were a victim of a cyber attack recently they are still trying to remediate that with some other third party uh, cyber security firms which they worked with right so that is a big concern as we move forward uh, as well and for that as well we do have courses in that industry which is into ics cada that is industrial uh, control systems specifically uh, and then uh, as i said in terms of vulnerability assessment after you move on to ethical hacking the next stage for them is the certified penetration testing professional because what you learn in ethical hacking is more of uh, the initial stages of pen testing i would call it more of a junior pen test kind of a role uh, for professionals who want to uh, look at that kind of a role right mm -hmm. but then when you're looking at the actual pen test uh, you know uh, from a from a very advanced level that is when they get on to the cpen program so the cpen program is designed in such a way that just the exam is a 24 hours exam now yeah. you know don't <laughs> let's not get scared there that you have to sit for the entire 24 hours yeah. just to do your exam but obviously the exam is split as 12 hours and 12 hours where they have certain modules to cover that and then at the end of the exam they have to uh, they have to submit a report a penetration testing mm -hmm. report which then allows them to get certified as a certified penetration testing professional right so that's more on the uh, more on the offensive side and then when you talk about um, application security we have programs in the uh, software development uh, secure software development uh, area as well which is called ECDE and that specifically talks about how to securely develop software in the entire software development life cycle right so we call it something called shift left where right from the initial stages of developing software you're trying to put a security layer there mm -hmm. and that is what you learn in the uh, in the ECD program we call it the EC council certified devsecops engineer program that's one of the new programs which we've recently launched in fact we had that program quite some time back as well but then we've recently updated the the modules uh, trying to cover all the latest uh, technology in it trying to cover a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, new cloud platforms we see out there because a lot of applications today are, are developed uh, over the cloud another program i think where we see a lot of um, um, uh, where the industry is moving towards specifically after the pandemic um, you know a lot of people are working from home uh, there's a hybrid working happening around which is still going on now right yeah. a lot of applications are developed in the cloud which means that you need to know how to secure your cloud right that's where we have the CCSE course, the Certified Cloud Security Engineer course, where it specifically talks about 
the three major platforms, which is your Microsoft Azure, uh, your GCP, the Google Cloud Platform, and AWS. So everything to do with security configurations um, in these three platforms is what uh, students learn in, candidates learn in the CCSC program, along with uh, application security in the cloud, pen testing in the cloud, uh, even when you're talking about the legality uh, compliance uh, area, the risk factor uh, in, 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 in the cloud environment, that's exactly what you learn in the CCSC program. So once that's all done, as a career track or as a learning track, the last certification what we have in that track is the Chief Information, Certified Chief Information Security Officer. Now, that's obviously our, is our executive leadership uh, course, specifically designed for those candidates and those professionals who have a minimum of five years of an experience in the field. Right. Uh, and again, um, that's one course where it is more to do with decision making. Uh, you learn uh, about risk management, you learn about compliance, you learn about budgeting. Right. Uh, for example, you know, if you have like uh, a team of incident handlers, uh, a team of disaster recovery professionals and a team of uh, ethical hackers in the, in the room. Right. So you so obviously as a chief information security officer, his role is to how to align all of them together, how to align the team together, how to give them the right direction. That is what uh, candidates learn in the CISO program. So that's our entire learning track, uh, so to speak. And obviously, like so at ID Cyber, we offer quite a few of those courses. Um, right. Another course that you, um, uh, that maybe you could provide some more details on would be the incident handler course. Right. Um, is there anything you can, who is that aimed at? Obviously, this kind of blue team and. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So incident handling course, again, is, uh, is, is quite a popular course as well in our, uh, in our entire learning track. Right. And what students actually learn here is the entire, let's say, the, the steps involved in your incident handling, uh, which is, you know, right from uh, looking at the uh, option of where the attack has happened. You know how do you uh, how do you uh, you know look at areas in terms of from a so uh, it's it's probably a stage where after the SOC analyst has done his role of identifying the different kind of threats what he sees in the organization he then hands it over across to the incident handler and then incident handler obviously looks at areas of how do you remediate that what are the steps involved so that tomorrow when an attack happens you know we are prepared. Right. That's exactly what you learn. It's a very important role if you talk from an industry, from an organization perspective, because uh, you need to have, um, you know, all the kind of knowledge involved in terms of designing the right kind of incident handling report, uh, looking at disaster recovery uh, areas, uh, business con continuity areas as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is all comprising uh, towards what a candidate learns in the incident handling uh, program because it's just not an attack an attack happening right it should be like an attack happens and everyone is like head running around like headless chickens that should not be the concern right the area here is that when because no matter how many you know no matter how you protect your security infrastructure or you have you know you secure your infrastructure right there are hackers obviously they find some of the other way to get onto your organization. Mm. So you need to have the right team in place so that if an attack happens, how are you going to respond to that? You know, what are the different steps we are going to take in order to, uh, you know, in order to protect such kind of an attack so that they don't occur again. And that's what exactly you learn in the EC Council incident handling program. Um, so you briefly mentioned the, the CH, which is a course that I've personally taken and I'm hoping to set my exam. Uh, quite soon. Um, can you give me a little bit more information about the CH and, and what's included in it? Right. Okay. So as uh, the course, uh, Certified Ethical Hacker, I mean, uh, today being one of the most popular courses all around the world. So today, if you just get onto Google and you search for the top cybersecurity certifications, you'll always find CH as among the top five, right? Now, what we've done recently, especially after the launch of version 12, just last year in, in September, we have changed the entire perspective of the course, right? So some uh, a while back, uh, the course only included uh, the courseware, a bit of hands-on learning uh, as well with the labs, and then you have the uh, exams, uh, you know, and, and you're done with it, right? But what we uh, understood, and specifically after talking to a lot of um, ethical hackers uh, who've already completed the certifications, is they always wanted to have a continuous learning element in it, 
Mm. Right. And that's what we've changed in the version 12, because version 12 is designed with, uh, we call it the four learning framework. So you have the, uh, the learn, you have the certify, you have engage and you have compete. Right. So learn obviously is you are learning about the latest technology in ethical hacking. Uh, you are using the latest uh, OS, the operating systems in it. You're learning about edge computing, you're learning about grid computing and a lot of other new technology what's there in place. Right. So that's the learning part of the framework. Then you have certify, obviously, because you are getting certified uh, under the ANSI accredited uh, certification, which is the American National Standard Institute um, certification. Right. So that's that makes it internationally recognized right now when it comes to certify it is just not the theoretical exam uh, you work on so theoretical exam is basically um, you know a four hours of 125 multiple choice questions you have uh, but then you also have the practical exam in it which consists of 20 challenges they are not multiple choice they are actual challenges which uh, candidates have to attempt on and you're given six hours to complete that right now, the beauty behind this is that you don't get just one certificate, you get two certificates. So when you, when you finish your theoretical exam, you get the Certified Ethical Hacker certificate. But once you complete your practical exam, you then get the CEH Master Certificate, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's your second framework, which is Certified. The third framework and the fourth framework are the latest frameworks which you've just introduced in the new version. Now, the third framework is called the engage framework. Now, what engage means is that, uh, you know, in fact, whatever you have learned in the entire ethical hacking training module, right? You are uh, using those uh, concepts. You're using those, um, you know, those, those learnings or those knowledge you've learned onto a live scenario. So say, for example, um, you know, there's a ransomware attack in one particular organization, right? Um, how would you um, work on remediating that? Or how would you do, uh, let's say, work on a malware reverse engineering methodology using the different frameworks you have learned in the course? So tomorrow, let's say that when these candidates get on to their jobs or when they go and attend interviews, right? They can always say that, yes, I've had an experience. I've had a pre-experience of actually engaging in a scenario, right? That's what you learn in the engage framework. Mm -hmm. And then the last framework, we call it the compete framework. And this is the best part of the program is that once students or once candidates, they complete their training, they are in fact given access to 12 months of challenges. Every month, there is a new challenge. Right. So, for example, the month of uh, Feb, we have a ransomware attack challenge for the month of, uh, let's say, April, we might have malware reverse engineering or there are multiple topics. And these challenges are from a global level. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that every ethical hacker, uh, they have to go and attempt that challenge. And obviously, you know, the amount of time they take in and uh, the way how they have attempted that challenge their name as well appears in something we call it the global ethical hacking leaderboard now that's from a global level right that's in fact a sense of pride as well to these students or these candidates because tomorrow whenever they get on to their jobs they can always say that uh, you know i have appeared in the uh, ethical hacking leaderboard right mm -hmm. so this sort of acts as a continuous learning element because every month there is a new challenge every every month there is something new which they are working on as long as they have the access to the uh, to the to the portal which uh, they've been given and uh, it also consists of video learning as well mm -hmm. so it is just not the courseware but there's video learning as well so that kind of comprises the entire certified ethical hacker uh, program and i think today this is the only program in the world which has all these elements tied in together that's as great such. yeah um you all at ec council also very recently announced a 3.5 million dollar scholarship yeah. program yeah um could you tell us more about this sure so uh the idea behind that is uh you know something which we've recently uh introduced uh is uh to get uh, or to introduce the field of cyber security for 10,000 professionals in uh, you know in the industry overall right and uh, as ec council we are pledging 3.5 uh, million dollars and that is because we are actually providing the entire content of the course completely free of cost right and again the reason behind this is 
you know, we and then trying to match to our, our mission, which is trying to mitigate cyber attacks. That is what we are working towards. So the idea here is the more amount of people, the more amount of professionals getting onto the industry, learning about cybersecurity, you know, and then looking at their career from, you know, from an advanced perspective towards where they want to head off, right? That's why we designed the campaign because we want to get as many professions as possible into the uh, into the campaign. Now, the idea obviously behind this is that we you know we are, we are actually providing two hundred hours of video content completely free. Uh, we are providing more than about two thousand four hundred pages of courseware content. Uh, we are providing the labs. Uh, we are having the capture the flag exercises in it. Uh, the exam voucher, which is a remote proctor ex uh, exam as well. Everything is completely free of cost. There's just a small registration cost for them, which is basically taken more of like a technology fees or a or a proctoring fees, we call it, right? But again, the idea behind this is to introduce the field of cybersecurity to as many professionals as we can, because the more amount of people getting into the industry, you know, uh, there are more professionals learning about how to protect or how to mitigate cyber attacks yeah. in the world. So really that's worthwhile initiative. that's the idea yeah. yeah and that's specifically for the cct program the certified cyber security technician program which we which we have as one of our entry-level programs in the entire learning track oh. excellent that's i mean that's such a it's such a, a great um thing to bring to the the whole community for the cyber security community so i think that's absolutely phenomenal that you're doing that um so you mentioned um briefly the cyber aware platform um, yeah. Can you just give us a bit more detail about what that is and right, you know, right. So, um, in any organization, right, um, when you talk about uh, the the kind of attacks happening around, right, we hear a lot about social engineering. We hear a lot about phishing attacks. Mm -hmm. More than ninety percent of attacks, what we hear today, are related to social engineering yeah. attacks, right. Humans are the human in any organization, as as all of us, right? They are the biggest factor. I mean, no matter how many um, you have, you have one of the strongest uh, security infrastructure in place, right? But at the end of the day, if humans working in an organization are not aware about the basics about security, that's where the problem is, right? So that's where Aware was designed because it specifically targets towards each and every employee in an organization, be it from the finance industry, be it from logistics, be it from marketing, who have no clue about what security is. But they need to understand what are the kind of emails they are clicking in, you know, uh, how to uh, ensure that they are actually, uh, you know, opening the right link or they're clicking on the right link, whether uh, you know, the, whether the email uh, address, where it comes from, um, is that genuine, right? Because we've heard a lot about attacks happening where uh, a lot of financial losses happen because they happen to just click on a wrong uh, link and uh, information has just gone across to the hackers and they just stole, uh, you know, uh, millions and millions of dollars. I'll give you an example. Um, so this was the time when I was running my own uh, organization. It is, it is it is a real life example it has happened to one oil and gas company, in fact, right? And uh, they they again happened to get an email from um, you know some unknown source. Uh, but then uh, obviously the email said uh, that uh, you know we've changed our account details because they actually wanted to impersonate as their supplier, right? So they've just sent them an email saying that we've just changed our bank account details. These are the correct bank account details. So, you know, based on this particular invoice, please transfer your money here. Yeah. And they literally did that. It was $250,000, you know, mm. obviously I don't want to name the company, yeah. but uh, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. They did that. And, uh, you know, obviously it, it went into the wrong hands and literally, uh, you know, the cybersecurity, uh, you know, law enforcement body in that particular country they couldn't do anything about it, right? Mm. It is a big concern. Now, if obviously they had the right control in place, if uh, the, the person who has actually transferred that money or clicked on that link was aware that the email address where it came from, you know, there was something missing, mm. they could have saved that, right? Mm. So this, this is where AWARE is born. So AWARE technically what it does is that it is a platform which uh, runs phishing simulation campaigns for employees in the organization, 
right? Now, uh, obviously, let's say if, there, if it's an organization of 1,000 employees, right? So all these 1,000 employees are sent phishing, phishing emails, which is which could be anything. It could be, let's say, change your password. It could be something coming from Microsoft. It could be something internally, right? And let's say that if they happen to click on the email, that is when the management gets a report stating that out of 1,000 employees, these many employees are not compliant because they clicked on the wrong email, yeah. right? So department-wise, uh, there is um, reports being designed and sent across to the management stating that, you know, this department, these many employees are not compliant, these many employees are compliant, you know. So that's pretty good and that's important for one organization from a compliance perspective and, uh, you know, tomorrow when um, organizations are moving into the ISO standards if they want to have their ISO 27001 in place, right? So in such scenario, they need to have a platform like AWARE so that employees within the organizations are, uh, you know, they, they, they know exactly what they're doing in terms of uh, emails, in terms of uh, links and stuff. And then again, um, obviously what we do is that the platform is designed uh, in such a way that it is just not in our cloud, but, you know, organizations who are banks uh, or who are financial institutions who uh, who do not like to, you know, have their emails, um, uh, you know, shared in an external cloud. Yeah. We can, in fact, deploy that on their servers as well. So the platform is designed in such a way that it can also be deployed on their servers. Right. So it's a quite a robust platform. Uh, and I think to, in today's world, it is very, very yeah. important for organizations to have that so that employees are aware on what exactly they're doing yeah it yeah. saves a lot of money yeah. and that's what exactly the web platform is about yeah so it's all about education yeah and, yeah. and this kind of changing environment which actually brings me really nicely onto my next question which is how do you see cybersecurity changing in the next five years oh i think quite a lot <laughs> quite a lot i mean again we've seen that right since the last few years we have seen how uh, you know cybersecurity as an industry has been evolving Right. And we've seen a big push, especially when the pandemic happened, because right after the pandemic, we've seen a lot of attacks happening because obviously, you know, people working from home, uh, you know, having hybrid work environment, which means they are accessing applications over the cloud. Uh, you know, you may never know how secure those are. Right. And because of that, we've seen a lot of attacks happening as well. So when you move forward, let's say next five years, it is estimated that cybersecurity as an industry is going to hit $300 billion. This I'm talking about is around by 2027, right? Even if you go further, which is about 2030, it's gonna hit $500 billion. That's the forecast, that's the estimate we look at it, right? Now, what is what is it that it's leading to that sort of a level, right? You're talking about, uh, you know, innovative uh, technologies in the field of cybersecurity. For example, a lot of organizations now are going to rely on AI and ML-based uh, solutions, right? Uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning based detection technologies. That is what is important. And a lot of organizations are going to move towards that. Uh, what's important is the talent pool, right? That's the industry we are in, right? There is still a huge gap. Right. Mm -hmm. As of last year, I think it was around two point three million dollars. Uh, sorry, two point three million professionals, which mm -hmm. is um, that that's the gap we see globally. Right. Obviously, that's coming down a bit now, but still there is a huge, huge gap. Right. I was in one of the events uh, recently, and I think just in UK, uh, there is a requirement for around 200,000 professionals just across UK. That's that's a gap we look at. Right. So. So what we see in the next five years is that there is a requirement of professionals in the field. There is a requirement of cybersecurity professionals out there trying to uh, protect companies from attacks, right? So that's where that's where the industry is going towards. Even, um, you know, I think organizations should be aware uh, in terms of the ransomware attacks, which is happening. That's becoming quite evident yeah. now as well, which means that incident handlers need to be well prepared. Yeah. right in advance, you know, how to mitigate such kind of attacks, you know, what is it that they have to look into? So that's probably another area, uh, you know, we're we looking at. But as I said, overall, it is evolving, you know, it is yeah. growing uh, all across. Uh, supply chain attacks, we've seen the solar winds attack, which happened uh, quite, quite a while back, right? So uh, again, obviously, organizations have to look towards, uh, you know, how to, uh, how to, you know, uh, protect 
their organizations from such kind of attacks happening, trying to share information with third party organizations. Right. So I think this is this is something where the world is uh, is moving forward. To. Yeah, the, the place is uh, it's a bit crazy at the moment as well the the different attacks that are happening there's so many it's hard to keep track of of all of them and yeah. you know it comes down to fishing etc but if you were to give one piece of advice to someone who wanted to be more their, their company to be more cyber security aware or some one thing that they could do what would you would you suggest that was? i think i would i would i would uh, stick on to uh probably um uh you know two points of mine and i think that's something which is very important First, as I said, um, having um, you know innovative technologies in cybersecurity itself, because today you see a lot of vendors come up out there, right? Sometimes when, whenever you just get into, let's say, an infosec um, exhibition, you you are actually confused mm -hmm. because there are so many vendors out there having their own set of solutions. But I think what's important is, as I said rightly. Uh, trying to look at uh, solutions uh, which obviously have uh, a bit of AI and a bit of M ML in it so that, uh, you know, they are aware right before an attack happens in terms of, you know, having from a threat intelligence perspective. That's important. So to have such kind of solutions in place to obviously to have the right team. Mm. That's very important because sometimes what happens is that a lot of organizations, they rely on third party uh, organizations, you know, they they probably rely a lot on managed service providers. And I'm not saying managed service providers is uh, is wrong. Yes, definitely, that's that's what they're there for, right? But, uh, you know, it's always important to have uh, an internal, uh, you know, an internal head in the house as well, who understands what cybersecurity is, who understands what incident handling is, who understands what ethical hacking is, what pen testing is, for example, right? So it's always important to have a proper pool of people within organizations, properly trained, properly certified. They know exactly what they're doing, right? So I think that's exactly what is important, right? Because again, as, as I said, as the industry is growing, the kind of attacks as well are growing. Right. Yeah. You have to ensure that you have the right people in place. You have to ensure that you have the right uh, infrastructure in place. I think these are the two key main areas, which is important. And probably that would be my advice. And if there was uh, one book or blog or podcast or actually even a person that's had a big impact on you and that you'd like to recommend our viewers uh, check out, what would that be? Right. Uh, I have two. OK. Uh, again, they're not cybersecurity. Uh, you know, from the cybersecurity field, but I think that sort of um, helped me in, uh, you know, in, in sort of a direction in my own life as well. And probably you might know one of them is Rich Dad Poor Dad, which is quite a popular yeah. book by Robert mm -hmm. uh, Kiyosaki, because that actually tells you, you know, different streams of revenue, which you always need to have as a, as a background, you know, you just should not rely just on one kind of a stream of income. And I think that's important because when you're looking at it from a future perspective, uh, obviously you need to have some sort of a backup in place, right? So that's that's something which is important. And another book I would uh, recommend as well is um, if you've heard of the uh, the Miracle Morning or the Morning Miracle. So uh, there's a, it's, it's written by uh, an author called Hal Elrod, right? And um, again, this is something which personally I was not following a lot earlier, but obviously after reading the book, uh, you know, it kind of teaches you towards your perspective. So when you get up in the morning, what's your perspective? What are you planning to do? Where you're going to think about in the next five years, for example, where do you have to go? Because that's every day in the morning when you get up, you need to have that focus in your head, right? And that's what the Miracle Morning book talks about. Obviously, that means waking up early, doing your meditation, doing a bit of your prayers, you know, and uh, probably writing a journal book, you know, because whenever you write something, that's when it is, it sits on your head rather than just being on your head. And that's what the Miracle Morning book talked about. I think these two books are something which kind of changed my own perspective towards life because I was a little bit carefree a few years back. But I think um, sometimes you need that push or sometimes you need that hit on your head, <laughs> right? Which, <laughs> is, real which is important yeah. so that it aligns <laughs> and it puts you on the right track. Um, so I'd just like to thank Faisal for coming along today. Um, and if you need to find out any more um, about this, you can find it in the links uh, that we will be providing for the show. Um, or you can find us at uh, idcybersolutions.com. Thanks again for tuning in. Bye-bye.